This song goes out to all those going through trials, tribulations. Look, man, I prayed for you. Hope you can see it through. Hope you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And may the Lord be with you. Much love. There he go, another day on earth. Giving praise to Yah, cause his faith comes first. And an easy life, but he makes it work. Walking the road of truth until his ankles hurt. The key is motivation and dedication. Inspiration sprinkled with some patience. Humble and grounded is what it makes him. Destined to walk in his path since day one. But he still got strife to deal with. From the moment he wakes up, he feels it. The way he eats, sleeps, lives, and pray makes him a topic of discussion at his place of stay. Distant from the crowd, never been the same. Guess he sees life in a different way. Hands to the east every single day. Tough trials, but still giving praise to Yahweh. Trials. Can't escape on these trials. Gotta face them. Trials. Can't bear much longer, but in the end, I know it's gonna make me stronger. Trials. Can't escape on these trials. Gotta face them. Trials. Can't bear much longer, but in the end, I know it's gonna make me stronger. The Lord is my resort, order in the court. I can feel the pressure rising more and more. I'm the center of attention, what a choice to make. One bad decision and I got hell to pay. This ain't a game, karma is alive and well. It'll come back to haunt you when you least can tell. Like life in jail, it'll keep you in shame. So much pain can explain, it'll drive you insane. But you look and you learn till you do what's right. The Lord the one is living a foolish life. He'll throw you to the lions to see where your mind is. He's hoping that you're gonna choose his side. Ain't no other option, is do or die. Yahweh's watching us all the time And a tiny little thing hidden from his eyes So here I go trying to walk this thin line trials. Can't escape on these trials Gotta face them trials. Can't bear much longer But in the end I know it's gonna make me stronger trials. Can't escape on these trials Gotta face them trials. Can't bear much longer But in the end I know it's gonna make me stronger One trial gone, five more approaches No time for laughing, gotta keep my focus Holding my guard tight, can't let it drop It's up to me to win this fight, ready or not Here I come, bitch, fired up, ready to go Sit down, say and get behind me, leave me alone I live to serve Yahweh, his kingdom is close I know you wanna see me fail, so he don't give me a road Up against the ropes, yeah, I'm under pressure The pressure's coming at me rapidly from all directions Puts me in a position to react impulsive But faith is key, can't leave with emotions There's a war in me still every day I'm proving my loyalty to the Holy King Hoping he has a reward for me Gotta keep the Lord with me, praying he stays over me Praying, oh Lord, my soul to keep to keep trials. Can't escape on these trials. Gotta face them trials. Can't bear much longer, but in the end, I know it's gonna make me stronger. Trials. Can't escape on these trials. Gotta face them trials. Can't bear much longer, but in the end, I know it's gonna make me stronger. So tight. Keep your face strong. All praise. The council, the council on Christ, on Christ, relations, 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 relations. Yes, yes. Most high in Christ, bless you, brothers and sisters, and shalom to you all. Mm-hmm. We're some brothers from the BOCC, also known as the Body of Christ Church. <clears throat> My name is Aura. This is Brother Bond, and this is an installment of the spiritual warfare series. This is the first installment. This is called No Light Equals Not Right. And in this uh, class slash episode, uh, Brother Aban and I are going to discuss the fruits of the Spirit. And in this presentation, we're going to, Brother Aban and I is going to present how to focus on the fruits of the Spirit and the battle we must fight to continually grow in producing spiritual fruit. And that's why it's titled No Light, Not Right, because if you're not practicing or producing or engaged in the fruits of the Spirit that come from the Most High, then you don't have any light in you. You're not accessing the light of the Most High, the light and the example of Christ within you. That's why it's so important that we discuss how we have to grow 
and how we have to endure and maintain in this spiritual warfare, which is the the never-ending battle, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, Brother Bond, mm-hmm. um, you can take it from here. I'm going to mm-hmm. do some work on the podcast so they have the information on there as well. Okay. All right. All, uh, first and foremost, we want to give all praises to the Most High through Christ. And um, we're just happy and grateful to the Most High through Christ to be able to come out here live and give up and, and you know, go through these scriptures about what the fruits of the spirits are, because this is the basis of our spiritual warfare. If we are really fighting, excuse me, if we are really following Christ, we are actually fighting a battle. You know, when people hear the term spiritual warfare, they think about, what was that Will Smith movie? Um, I Am Legend, you know, or um, Charlton Heston with um, Soylent Green, you know, where the world is full of zombies and, you know, just to take a trip to the um, corner store or something like that, you got to go through three checkpoints and and shoot 15 zombies or something like this is Grand Theft Auto or something you know, a role-playing game, but it's not that. Um, The world may devolve into that. I don't know. I'm not a predictor of the future, but according to the Bible, as it is written, the spiritual warfare we're involved in is us ruling our spirit, okay? So if we are not going to have the fruits of the spirit we're going to be overrun by different evil thoughts, evil spirits, evil mindsets that can take and end up manipulating us and using us as tools for Satan. And what we're supposed to do if we're really following Christ is to use ourselves as tools and utensils, vessels for righteousness, according to Christ. Um, I want to pull up a scripture right quick. I have it here. Um, If we can, I got it in the queue. So, yeah, that that looks about right. So I just want to make sure it's large enough for the audience to see. This is Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. Um, Can you read that for me or you want me to read it? Yeah, sure. I can read that. Okay, thank you. And it says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Mm. So this is going to be a basic overview of what the fruits of the spirit are. But to just start out with like an umbrella statement, the fruits of the spirit, according to Christ, as it is written, is basically us being able to rule ourselves, to be able to have self-control and apply Christ to that self-control. You know, it's no, for example, it's no good reason for you to not be angry for two Mm -hmm. weeks, you know, somebody prodding you, not be angry for two weeks. And then two weeks, one day, four hours, 15 minutes later, you a a mass shooter. (laughs) 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 I'm just saying, you know, so, so that is the battle. Right. That's the so when you do something like what I just described, you are losing that spiritual battle. And when you can't have that mind of Christ to control and order your thoughts, your um plans, your reactions, when you can't do that. You're just like a city that is broken down and without walls. 
Now consider this. Back in the day when this was written, they would have cities that had walls because there was no, um, you know, high tech drones and airplanes pinpoint dropping bombs and stuff like that. They did have catapults, but if the walls were high enough, the missiles and stuff couldn't break through the walls. So you had people that would live in the city or just outside the city. And when a time of trouble came, even the people outside the city, they would run into the city, they would close these giant doors, gates, and they would hide behind the walls for protection. So just like that, and um, I'm thinking um, um, Lord of the Rings when they attacked that fortress, that, that yeah. city, city fortress. You know, so if you can't control yourself and control your reactions, your thoughts, your um, murmurings, your surmisings, your, <clears throat> you know, how you add stuff together. Well, you know, this was, this happened and this happened. So that person over there, I don't care if they're concerned about me or not, but they deserve all my anger. <laughs> Dude, you have become a playground for Satan. Just like that city, if it didn't have that protection of those strong walls, the enemy could run through it and just take it over and burn everything down, take all the, the money and everything, take prisoners, make them slaves, everything with that city. And we are the same way. If we excuse me, if we are overcome by these thoughts, you know, and, and we fail at the fruits of the spirit, you know, we are going to be Satan's playground. There's going to be evil spirits all up in our minds. Right. You know, <clears throat> so go ahead, bro. <sighs> you know, I'm glad you brought this scripture out first because yeah. Mike, let me ask you a quick question and it's just, you know, Everybody's going to pretty much know the answer, but do you believe after studying the works and the life that Christ lived, do you believe that he had rulership over his own spirit? Oh, most definitely because he is our example. Right. You know? The reason I bring that up mm -hmm. is because the example that the Messiah leaves in, in what we learn in the scriptures it's a powerful example on how to succeed in elevating your spiritual understanding in the physical. So let me explain that. Because when you have rulership of your spirit, and I've been in these situations, the attacks come even harder. Is that not true? Oh, man. Satan's going to try to get at you, right? Because uh, you and, are representing mm -hmm. what he despises. You're, mm -hmm. you're representing the quest for salvation when he's trying to get you to, to not even believe in salvation or believe in anything righteous. Mm -hmm. So I'm, my point is this, and, and you alluded to it about the anger, because mm -hmm. I was going to talk about the anger. Mm -hmm. And I know this from personal experience. I know Brother Kakam has talked about it. Other brothers have... Mm -hmm. um, express their challenges with that spirit of anger. And when I look at this scripture, it's so important to have rulership over your spirit because if not, something like anger can spiral into a lot of bad things. And it takes one instant for something to go wrong, for other things to go wrong when you're not mm -hmm. spiritually strong, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is why this developing the fruits of the spirit is so important now more than mm -hmm. ever because we live in a society, well, we live in a world right now that's constantly attacking us when we are living righteous lifestyles. And I know this all to be so true because I've seen it with certain brothers and sisters in this mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. I've seen it with myself lately where last year, even though I was reading scriptures, I had mm -hmm. a lot of that self-righteous indignation and it did stir up a lot of anger when I would criticize other people. 
So technically, I was spiritually weak without even realizing it, but I thought I was spiritually strong. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed is when you get into that spirit of anger, like I did, you wind up losing a lot. But when you refrain from being in that spirit of anger, when things are coming to test you, it may seem like you're taking a loss. Because I can tell you right now, mm -hmm. I've taken a lot of losses lately. <laughs> a lot. Mm -hmm. But the difference now compared to years prior mm -hmm. is that when I would take the loss years prior, what's the first thing I do? Get upset. Mm -hmm. Start blaming certain circumstances or people for why my life or this situation is not going well or whatever the case may be. And mm -hmm. automatically I get upset and that brings me down a trajectory of no light, no vibration. And that's where the enemy loves because then the enemy don't really have to do much to sway you to go even further away from the light and from righteousness, and from that spirit of Christ. So my whole point is that, brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. you cannot allow anger to get the best of you. Because mm -hmm. having, you know, for me, and, and this, this scripture is so important, because every time I read the scripture, you know what it reminds me of? Not only did I have to be in the spirit of Christ, but I have to be in the spirit of temperance and patience. Because when, when those mm -hmm. things come at you, like they have to uh, at me lately, the big mm -hmm. difference is this, brother. I was just mm -hmm. alluding to how I get angry and all this thing was spiral, but now I don't. Mm -hmm. Now I just accept it as this is the most high's will working for my favor. Mm -hmm. This is happening for a reason to serve me. Like when I interview Robert Riopelle, everything happens for a reason and that reason's mm -hmm. there to serve you because the most high is in everything. And that spirit of Christ is in righteousness. So when you're doing the right things, good things happen, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes they don't. And that's the challenge that we have to face of being in rulership of the spirit. It's not in being in rulership of the spirit when everything is going well. Because when everything mm -hmm. is going well, there ain't nothing to think about. Mm. It's the challenges. And I, 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 I could tell you this. I've been in rulership of my spirit. Is there room for improvement? <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the strides that have been made for the past 10 years in dealing and having rulership of the spirit and letting, instead of letting some outside malevolent negative force disturb that rulership and distract me from being in rulership of the spirit and being in that spirit of Christ. So... Mm -hmm. Not to, you know, I kind of went on from the couple of no, different you tangents. But no, you didn't. No, you didn't. You tangented in an arc right back to the topic. But just to, to the last thing I want to say is that mm -hmm. you have to, you have to be patient when things don't go your way. That's how you maintain mm -hmm. rulership of your spirit. You mm -hmm. have to, because the reason why I asked you the question about Christ is because when you read the experiences that Christ had in the scriptures, mm -hmm. patient, very calm, never mm -hmm. allowed the ignorance of others or the hatred or negativity of others take him off course. Mm -hmm. He maintained a level or what I like to believe a level of, of frequency of positivity that cannot be interrupted. It was like mm -hmm. it was too powerful for you to to, for you to even try to jam it up. Because if you try to jam that energy up, you, it's going to wind up hurting yourself. And that happened to a couple of brothers and sisters that try to do the Messiah dirty. Mm -hmm. But I say this, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, is that it is extremely... What did I do here? Did I bring myself out? Hold on. I think I took myself out of the studio. <laughs> Am I still in the studio? Or okay. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I was doing a class with a brother and um, I got kicked out of the live 
My bad. Uh, there, uh, there you are. <laughs> there you are. I was like, man, the brother just got kicked out. Yeah, you know? just, nah, that was an accident. But oh, okay. just to sum uh, it all up, not to, mm-hmm. so I keep on going about this, but yeah, just we, we have to maintain a level of peace and calm mm-hmm. when times are treacherous and rough. And that's really what's important is not the rulership of the spirit when everything is going well. It's when the challenges are coming, when the enemy is trying to, to sec to make you second guess Christ, trying to make you second guess righteousness and the pursuit mm. of it. So that's all. Okay. All right. And you know what? That was a good thing that um you mentioned Christ because I want to go here to a prophecy about Christ. And even though it's in the Old Testament, we have to remember. Matthew 5, 17, when Christ said, I am not come to do away with the law. I am here to fulfill it. Meaning that he was not going to put to an end, an end to it. He was going to fulfill everything that was written of him. And it mentions that in Acts, when Paul was talking to people about Christ, he said when, when he had fulfilled everything written of him, meaning all the prophecies, they ended up taking him and, and, and burying him, right? So I want to read this right quick. It's Isaiah 11. And um, can you read uh, verses 1, 2, 3? All right. All right. I mean, I can read it if you nah, if you still doing it. Right. Okay. All right. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of... I sees. No, Jesse, I'm sorry. That's Jesse's. the old, I got the old English King James. Sorry. Oh. And a branch shall grow out of his roots and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord and shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Okay. So here's the thing. It's talking about a prophecy of Christ because a rod out of the stem of Jesse, the rod is basically the the ruler, rulership out of the stem of Jesse. When you look at the family tree, it'll be all your great grandparents, uncles, all this other stuff to you. But then when it goes past you, it's like basically uh, uh, your roots, right? So it means when it says a branch shall grow out of his roots, it means a descendant of Jesse. Jesse was the father of David. And we can go to, I believe it's Second Samuel chapter seven, when Nathan the prophet described uh, Christ coming through his through David's lineage, um, which is also Peter mentions that in Acts chapter two. So the spirit of the Lord is going to rest upon him. So he had the fruits of the spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might. So he remember in the, the New Testament when it talks about he spake as one that had authority and not as one of the scribes. So he was he knew what he was talking about. He really believed in it and he wasn't doing it for show. All right. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So he humbled himself to the Lord as it was written. All right. And this is what it is. Um, this is what I wanted to bring out here. This part. Um, Can you read this again, verse three, and then read that first part of uh, verse, actually you can read verse four to uh, scroll up a little bit or down, sorry. So you want me to read Uh, verse three and four? Yes. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor 
and reprove with etiquette. Equity. With equity, sorry. Mm-hmm. For the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Mm. So actually, you could have said uh, um, etiquette because it was a way that he dealt with people that was not hypocritical or um, didn't have any guile in him, like it said in um, 1 Peter 2, 21 and 22. Yeah. And brother, shout outs to brother Samak that's in the chat room who posted that up. Let's read that real quick. Just yeah. so that mm-hmm. bring some context. Okay. What uh what verse did he uh what scripture did he post? I can pull it up. Uh he posted up John. Let's see here. Mm-hmm. He posted no, sorry, first Peter's chapter two, twenty to twenty-five. So I'll mm-hmm. read it. Okay. All right. Okay. Give me one second. Just want to make sure mm-hmm. I got 20 to 25. Okay. okay. So I'm going to read 20 to 25. And this is mm-hmm. this is to further prove what we were talking about earlier about how Christ was so calm and peaceful, even in the most dangerous, peculiar, or uh, tumultuous moments. He was always mm-hmm. steady. Steady Eddie. Mm-hmm. So it says in uh, 1 Peter's chapter 2, Verses 20 to 25, it says, For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye should take pl- take it patiently? But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even here unto where ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body of the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. Mm. Yeah, you're muted, brother. You mute it. Oh, thanks. So now we're not going to be as that city that's broken down without walls if we live after Christ, right? Right. We're going to we're going to be able to have the fruits of the Spirit by His example, and just like with Christ, when He was uh, buffeted, targeted, abused, followed around with people trying to find fault with him so they would have a reason to put him to death. He took it patiently. He would mention the scriptures. No, you know what? You're accusing me of uh, violating the Sabbath. I'm not violating the Sabbath. I'm actually keeping the Sabbath. But if you read the scriptures, you would understand. So he bounced to the next town, right? And this is what he's calling us for or calling us to. He's calling us and he left us an example so that we would have the fruits of the spirit just like him. So even when people like it talked about how they gnashed their teeth on him, so how they um, encouraged him or prodded or provoked him with madness in their speech to try to get him to say something out of pocket. He didn't come back at them that way. All right. And then when he suffered, he didn't threaten. Do you know who I am? Like, um, what's that? I saw that clip the other day in the Temptations when uh when they fired dude um David Ruffin in that in that scene. He was like, You you can't do this. Do you know who I am? I made y'all. You can't do this. <laughs> and then ran away. No. 
No, you don't act like that. You don't ever try to justify yourself. The one that justifies us or not is the most high, right? And that's what Christ did. He committed himself to him that judged righteously. And he did take our sins in his own body on the tree, on the cross. Okay, so that we being dead to sins, that being dead to sins um, is our, excuse me, us having a chance at renewal. Okay, like it says in Acts chapter 17 about how when, um, when we were in ignorance, God winked at those sins. Now we should live unto righteousness. And because of his sacrifice, we're healed. So now we are not, like I said, just a couple of seconds ago, we are not as that town broken down and without walls ran through by the enemy. We have defense and offense. And we have a system in place from the Most High through Christ so that we can be able to have that temperance and return to the Most High through our shepherd and bishop of our souls who is Christ, all right? So I want to go back to um, Isaiah um, 11, again, because I want to finish out that, uh, that um, what's the name, that verse. It was verses three and four. Um, and I'll, I'll read it right quick. Isaiah 11, verse three and four. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. So when you look at that, what this is actually saying in modern terms is, and even it talks about it in First Peter, what it's talking about is you couldn't trigger this dude. You couldn't trigger this dude. I remember I... I um. I uh, had a friendship with an older person and they loved to hate Orange Man bad. So I used to go on the internet, like you read a news article about them and I would just, I wouldn't like send them the article. I would like screenshot the picture and, you know, crop it and then just send them the picture and they would, you know, text me back, ah! I, you know, I'd be to my, I'd say to myself, yeah, well, their blood is flowing. You know, you couldn't trigger Christ like that. There are people that if you say Joe Biden, they'll get triggered. You know, so, I mean, it goes both ways. But the thing is, you cannot or could not I think trigger. If, I think if you say Dr. Mm -hmm. Fauci, you trigger Cook. <clears throat> come. <laughs> come starts reaching for a <laughs> weapon. <laughs> uh, you know, so that that triggers some people. But see, yeah. the thing is, when he, you know, as some people, they like, um, for instance, there was a video on the uh, Saturday that I saw where it was like, um, you know, just all kind of madness with, uh, um, uh, insane like uh tw twerking and stuff like that and you know some people like if you know if, if you can't stand it you just you know scroll on or you go to the next video or you look at something else or you just cut it off but some people would actually get so mad at that instead of understanding that the people that's doing that really have no understanding because they wouldn't do vile things like that if they really understood. So Christ didn't see something and flip out. He didn't hear something and flip out. You know, Christ Christ uh, stopped through the tavern or stopped through the end, excuse me, stopped through the end after a long day of preaching in the temple and somebody say, hey, ain't you such and such, you know, uh, Josephine said such and such about you. What? Where that be at? No. <laughs> you know, he had that rule over his spirit. So the conclusions he came to was going to be with 
what uh, what verse four describes. And verse four says, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And so what it's talking about is he was not going to um, just uh, angrily yell at people um, and, and, and just diss people, go petty. He was not going to just come out of his mouth or with his actions, you know, express that anger and wrath because the scriptures say it's not righteous for men. It's not supposed to be. It was not made for man. Okay. Uh, the scripture says anger was not made for man. Neither was furious. Uh, wrath was not made for man, I think. And furious anger was not made for them that are born of a woman. So he never responded like that. And then, it, you know, at the end, it says, he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither, excuse me. At the end, it says, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. That is uh, upcoming pretty soon, you know? So that's what I just wanted to bring out right there because you mentioned how Christ would not, you know, would not just go the H-E-L-L off. And that's the scripture that shows it. Right. You know, <clears throat> and I'm going to bring out a quick scripture that mm -hmm. is very reflective of this class and even mm -hmm. of the title of the class. Mm -hmm. And let's bring that out real quick. Okay. Where is it? I'm going to share it. It's Romans mm -hmm. oh, chapter okay. eight, verse nine. Okay. Let's see if I mm -hmm. have it right here. Okay. It says, but ye are not in the flesh, mm -hmm. but in the spirit. If so, be that spirit of God mm -hmm. dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, mm -hmm. he is none of his. Mm -hmm. And it's really that simple, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can, you can tell when mm -hmm. somebody has that Holy Spirit on them. You can kind of tell. And, and the reason why I say you can tell is if you have that spirit on you as well. Mm -hmm. Takes but one even, to know one. Yeah. But even people that are not in the spirit know that something is right with the man or the woman who is having the spirit of the most high dwell in them and mm -hmm. having that spirit of Christ guide them. You mm -hmm. can tell. Even if you're not mm -hmm. a spiritual person, you can tell. There's going to be certain things that happen that identify that person that they're different. And you can notice that a lot these days because most of the world is not living righteously. Most of the world mm -hmm. is living the do what thou wilt culture, which mm -hmm. Satan has his hands all over and is doing a pretty good job. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring the scripture out to remind mm -hmm. people that you got to be in it to win it. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy, but it is rewarding, mm -hmm. especially so, uh, when you're in that spirit. Because even though a lot of times, and I've seen this happen with me recently, sometimes things may happen where it doesn't work in your favor. But even when it's bad, it's still good. There is something working. You're just not seeing it yet because mm -hmm. the most high is putting things in place for things to be revealed. And sometimes if you're not doing right, the Most High is going to remind you that you're not in that spirit of Christ. And there's going to be things that happen to you to remind you that you have to change. Mm -hmm. So pers the pursuit of the fruits of the spirit is a, is a, is a relentless pursuit. Mm -hmm. It's like you always want to be learning something. You know, I learned something <clears throat> from, from this organization that I was working with. And they have something called Echo, where it's like every conversation has an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, well, let's call it Esho. <laughs> For <laughs> every scripture has an opportunity mm -hmm. to develop in the fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. So it's like you can take bits and pieces and literally practice that and develop a new fruit of the spirit. Because this has been proven scientifically and, and it's been that enough data to support this. But whatever you do for 30 days straight becomes part of you, becomes ingrained mm -hmm. into your spirit. Mm -hmm. So if you can practice 
the teachings of Christ for 30 days, just one thing. If, let's say if you practice patience for 30 days, it becomes ingrained in your spirit. If you practice mm. temperance, if you practice certain fruits of the spirit for 30 days or more, they will become ingrained into you. You will become that fruit. Mm -hmm. Right? You become that. So mm -hmm. that's all hey, I got, bro. Uh, grab um, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, right quick. Okay. 22 and 23. Okay, because I, I want to uh, go I to the fruit. Okay, I want to go to the fruits of the Spirit so we can look at what they are, and we can just, what I did was, um, spoiler alert, I went and looked up the definition of each word of the fruits of the Spirit. Let me make it bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Old man could see that. <laughs> I can, that's why I be blowing it up, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, let me... Let me get this. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so here we go. Mm -hmm. you like, would you like me to read verse 22? Oh, yeah. 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, mm -hmm. peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, Temperance against such there is no law. Mm. Mm. Read 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Okay. So just like Christ died and rose again, and this is basically Romans chapter six, just like he died and rose again, our old man with those old evil affections and lust has to die and be reborn. Right. You know, so go ahead. Let's read 25 and 26. Mm -hmm. If we live in the spirit, let us mm -hmm. also walk in the spirit. That's a very powerful mm -hmm. scripture right there. Let's, let's, mm -hmm. let's uh, expound on that for a moment before mm -hmm. we read 26. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's the thing. If you're going to live in something, like it says in um, Romans 10, the, the righteous, if a man is going to be righteous, he's going to live righteously, basically. I know I just butchered it. But if you're going to be in Christ and have his mindset, you're going to go through every episode, every encounter, every day of your life with that mindset. Like I said, people provoking you and you okay one week, one day, four hours and 15 minutes. And then all of a sudden you a mass shooter. That's not walking in the spirit, you know? Um, and it says, uh, let me see where is it? It says, uh, I'm not going to look up Romans 10. I'm skimming over it and couldn't find it. But the thing is, the one thing about uh, verse 25 that a lot of times is key to the battle is that these fruits of the Spirit, they are in us and they come out. Okay? Um, it's not like I can just say it. I have to do it. So these things, if I have love for somebody, you're going to be able to see me doing things that show my love for them. And I'm not talking about big booty Judy. <laughs> I'm talking about, I'm talking because that's lust. All right. I'm talking about you are actually being kind, considerate, charitable, to being able to step to them and correct them when they need it. This is love according to the scriptures. All right. So if you go and have that fruit of the spirit in you and say you do, and you trying to do that, you have to be growing in that. 
and have those actions to match up with what the scriptures say. All right. And it tells you in verse 23, against such there is no law. So that when it, that consideration, that charity, and the things that aren't even mentioned there, because they are actually related to the fruits of the Spirit. They are fruits of the Spirit because all the fruits of the Spirit combined into an umbrella term called charity, according to the scriptures. But there is no scripture against that. Okay? So it says, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So we shouldn't um, do things like it talks about, I believe in 2 Corinthians, where it says we shouldn't compare ourselves by ourselves, you know, and, and amongst ourselves, because then we can think and, you know, oh, I'm doing good or I'm not doing as good as this brother or that sister. And then what is that? Then you start envying. Then, you know, we had that hatred. Um, or if we try to justify ourselves and be better than somebody else, that is not the way to be. That right. is not the way to be. But um, one thing I did do, I went and um, I went to MiriamWebster.com and I pulled up the definitions for all of these fruits of the spirit. And to keep from going back and forth, clicking here, back, you know, back page and, you know, doing all this other stuff. What I did was I put it into a document right quick. So I want to okay. pull that up. Let's do it. Uh-huh. I'm going to stop my show. Uh, okay. Um, and can you see that? Yep. Okay. So love. What is love? Baby, no, no, <laughs> no, no. Baby, don't hurt me no more. No more. What is love? Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Matter of fact, I just found out uh, about two months ago that uh, that guy was black. Um, did not know that. But love, and this is definition for a... And when you go to MiriamWebster.com, the um, the first couple of definitions are like um, uh, physical attraction, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. That is actually lust. So, according to the Bible, this would be what love is: unselfish, meaning you're not going to put yourself over others. Right, like it talks about in Philippians two, each esteem others um, and care for others over yourself. All right, unselfish, loyal, and benevolent. See, benevolent since one a, which is what I have down here. Right. All right. Concern for the good of another. All right. So you're gonna help people. But also, you're not going to deceive people. You're not going to trick people. Um, like the scripture says, there's somebody that, um, um, and th this person isn't right. It says they will trick or deceive their neighbor and then say, oh, I, was I not in sport? Oh, I was only joking. You know, no, that's not how you're supposed to do. All right. Concern for for the good of another. And that includes coming to people and say, hey, listen, you know, we're not doing this right or you're not doing this right. This is what you need to do according to the scriptures. So when we come out and do shows and say, listen, sisters got to stop wearing control top pantyhose outside like it's out, outerwear or <laughs> they got to stop doing this or that because the scriptures say so because we're concerned for the consequences that those things bring about. And we want our people and everyone that hears this or sees this to actually have a good outcome for their life. That is love. All right. So unselfish, loyal, and benevolent concern for the good of another, such as the fatherly concern of God for humankind and brotherly concern for others. 
you know, like people say, oh, you, I'm, I'm your brother from another mother. No, we actually have to, you know, mean that, you know, and when you act and treat people like that, you don't have to say corny stuff like brother from another mother. You know, well, I mean, it's actually not corny because if you're saying it and doing it, then it's not corny. If you're just saying it, but not doing it, it is corny. All right. So, and, and then benevolent, marked by or disposed to doing good. So when you look at Ephesians 4, how it talks about those that steal, let them steal no more, but work. It talks about um, and basically Ephesians 4, 22 down to the end about how we can do good to ourselves and to each other, you know? So this love is what we have to have, but it has to be in us and it has to be natural. All right. So then you got anything on that, bro? No, I mean, the only thing I would say is that it's, it, it takes work to be a good person. Mm-hmm. I'll even mm-hmm. say this, and I'm going to take a mm-hmm. quote Go from ahead. Dr. Romney. Mm-hmm. She says, to survive in American culture, you mm-hmm. have to have a little narcissism, right? Oh, yeah, I remember that, yeah. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because mm-hmm. to survive the mm-hmm. spiritual warfare, you got to have righteousness. Mm-hmm. You got to have a lot of it too, not a little bit. Like she mm-hmm. said, you need to have a little bit of, of, of narcissism just to survive. But you need a lot of righteousness to survive in the world today. And the reason why I say mm-hmm. survive is because if you're not going to go down the path of malevolence, if you're not going to go down the dark path, then there's only the light. But in order mm-hmm. to attain it, you're going to have to do a lot of things because it's not easily accessible. Mm-hmm. It's not something where you and I could walk down the street and be like, I'm going to get some righteousness today. Let me get that <laughs> righteousness on the shelf that you got there for $5.99. Matter of fact, let me get two for 10. You can't do that here because mm-hmm. we live in a world where it's constant constant strife, murmuring, gossiping, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. malevolence, uh, you know, uh, perversions. I mean, the list goes on and on. So Mm -hmm. when I read this, this is part of the conditioning. You have to condition Mm -hmm. yourself to be a good person. Mm -hmm. You have to condition yourself with the fruits of the spirit that are within the scriptures in becoming that so that mm-hmm. when people experience you, they recognize you. They're like, hey, that brother's a righteous brother. I like that brother. I think we talked about that before, about it's important not how people view you for the, for the first impression, even though first impressions are important, but it's really mm-hmm. when you leave. How mm-hmm. does that person feel once you're gone? Do they feel like, damn, that, you know, I'm missing out on something or I, I feel mm-hmm. good when this brother's around, right? Because there's this people that we know that when they're around us, we feel good. We feel like nothing's going to go wrong. Mm-hmm. And then there's those other people when they're around. You're like, oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. Something's about, about this, to go down. This, here come this, such and such. Yep. Huh? And usually they come and they, they do damage, you know, and they disrupt, mm-hmm. they distract, or they... They bring some type of um, negative energy that, you know, it's just not good. Mm-hmm. But all in all, I like this. I like this mm-hmm. because it's important for us mm-hmm. to stay focused on doing good. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you from personal mm-hmm. experience, it's not always easy. Sometimes it is, but most of the time it's not. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that from my own personal experience, sometimes I have to really dig deep to not mm-hmm. go down that spirit of anger or anything else that is um, unbecoming mm. of that spirit and that Holy Spirit of Christ. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Exactly. All praises. So next we have joy. And uh, like I said, some of the, um, the joy definition. and pain. <laughs> sunshine. Like sunshine. And rain, rain, rain. <laughs> Um, and then before that, there was joy, joy to be, no, and, and it's, uh, to the world. <laughs> oh, no, you, oh, you going off, bro. Yeah, I'm going off. I'm yeah, going yeah. off. I'm going to the dark have, side. Yeah. I'm going to have to show you some love after the show. To the bro. Call you yeah. We go have to, we go have to talk about that, bro, because <laughs> I'm going to have to show you some love, <laughs> but that's part of love, you know? Right. But like I said, a lot of these definitions went into like um, sensual and excitement, you know. So I picked the definitions that were most um, adherent to what the scriptures say, according to as it is written. Okay. So joy, the emotion evoked, meaning brought forth by well-being, success, or good fortune. And you really don't need success or good fortune to have joy because didn't Job lose everything? And he was like, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So he was still happy that he was even still alive. Now he went, you know, Mm -hmm. mighty low and... He was bought low, but he did not curse God. But in the end, you know, he found out what he was doing wrong. He repented. And guess what? The Lord gave him double. All right. But now the thing is, when we go through things, we still have to be able. And sometimes, man, when we go through stuff and we we're looking at this or we're hearing this stuff that's going on with us or with, you know, with society, sometimes we have to look past that and dig and scrape and scratch to bring that joy, to find that joy and bring it out, you know, but still in all, it's something that we have to have because you can't, um, you can't be stressed out um, swimming up to your neck or floating, bobbing up and down, almost drowning in stress and have any of these other fruits of the spirit. You're going to be miserable. All right. So right. Go ahead. Go ahead. impulse, I was thinking impulse. We can't mm-hmm. be impulsive because that's mm-hmm. really what takes us out. The spirit is our reaction mm-hmm. to things instead of thinking about mm-hmm. our decisions before we make them. Thinking mm-hmm. about the choice we can make before we make them. Sometimes we are so impulsive to react to something. We're not seeing the three or four choices that the Most High laid out for us to choose from. We only mm. see one. And a lot of times mm. as we see red, we, you know, we get angered and mm-hmm. we make the wrong choices. Very important mm-hmm. not to be impulsive. You yeah. know, I was thinking about, you know, how... I'm going through like my little Job right now moments. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But what I've realized throughout the years, especially from the end of last year going into this year, Mm -hmm. especially coming out of Passover, one of the things Mm -hmm. I learned is that when it's bad, it's still all good. Mm -hmm. You said it today to me. I told you about a situation I went through that was Mm -hmm. not favorable. (laughs) to say the Mm -hmm. least, but it's Mm -hmm. the most high working, what doing, you know, working Mm -hmm. the way the most high works, where it's like sometimes things are taken away for other doors to open up. Sometimes things are taken away to teach you something for you to Mm -hmm. learn from. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going through a Joe Bowman right now where there's certain things that are being taken away but it's mm-hmm. also letting me know for what I have to repent for and learn from and get better mm-hmm. at. Mm-hmm. So that when I encounter certain situations in the future, I handle them even better than what I did. Mm-hmm. And also to the, the reason why I brought up impulse is because a lot of times when things don't go well for us, 
we immediately respond with um, our immediate response is something negative. Mm -hmm. When you're in that spirit, and I know this from personal experience just recently, mm -hmm. is that when you're in a moment where something doesn't go your way or somebody tries to attack you or antagonize you, mm -hmm. just stay calm. Just know that in all of the negativity, the most high still resonates within there. And through that spirit of Christ, all things are possible. So anything negative can be overcome. Mm -hmm. And that way, you don't engage in the spirit of anger knowing that because you know that this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. This too shall pass. And, you mm -hmm. know, one of my favorite um, scriptures from Christ is that forgive them, Father, for they know what, not what they do. Mm. Think about that. Think about that. And, I, and this is the, I'll say this and then you can take it from here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about the moment that Christ said that for the first time. That was pretty quick reaction. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was not impulsive, but it was pretty quick. He was pretty quick on his feet because he's in that spirit of righteousness. So mm -hmm. he could have been like, Damn, y'all hitting me hard. You know, I hope I hope you get run over by a horse or something. But no, <laughs> you know, what? I pray that you get run over by a horse. But he said, "Forgive them, Father, for what they 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 know they they don't what not what they do. They, they know not what they do." Yeah, that's yeah. that's where I'm working towards. I'm working towards <laughs> living a life to where I can say that at the drop of the dime when I'm mm -hmm. approached by you know, a hater mm -hmm. or an ignorant, mm -hmm. an ignorant <laughs> by a person who's looking to destroy or mm -hmm. looking to antagonize and, and break down. Mm -hmm. And that's all I wanted to say because mm -hmm. I sometimes succeed in that where I mm -hmm. say that mm -hmm. and then there's other times where I don't. And that's where no. I have to learn how to be better, how to ingrain those fruits of the spirit so I can mm -hmm. react like that all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, two things that reminds me um, the Chappelle show, the outtakes um, from the time haters. Oh. Remember when the, <laughs> yeah, the, remember dude, that. the dude, the dude was uh, supposedly hitting Dave Chappelle with the whip, but he missed the shield that was on his back. And they, they was like, yo, man, what the, you know, so the white dude started running. I didn't read it, you know. So, you know, you just have to take that, you know. And um, a lot of times, if we don't have that joy, what we end up doing is, and I want to bring up this other screen here right. from Hebrews chapter three. Um. You can see we have Hebrews chapter three here. Oh, I never pressed share. How about that? You gotta go. press share. You gotta press share to share the screen. You know, if we don't have that joy, how can we have confidence? So we're up in Hebrews three, right? And um here it is. But exhort one another daily. Hebrews three thirteen. But but exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin, because we can be tricked, you know, like, right. and, and that's a, uh, you know, you did a good thing um, by telling me about that because now I, I know because I've been in a situation like that, how sometimes stuff can be hard and then you, it'll take away your joy. And then, you know, you don't call anybody. Now it's building up and building up. And uh-oh, Satan done found a way past your fortification. He done passed through a chink in the armor, you know, but, and that can lead to bad things. But when you talk to somebody about that and say, hey, listen, this and this and this is going on, and they can exhort you, you know, a lot of times that can be what will take you from that lack of joy to put that joy in you to like help readjust your mindset to where it should be. And it's the same with all of the fruits of the spirit. That's why we have to exhort one another daily while it is called today, because we don't know how much time we have left. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Verse 14, 
For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. So we have to be confident, excuse me, confident and faithful. You know, that listen, the Lord said, if I do A, then B. Um, I was talking with a sister. Actually, I was listening to a sister talk. And she was talking about, you know, the first time that something happened to her because she was going through different jobs, moving city to city and stuff like that. She was like, you know, the first time I lost my job, I was like, yo, man, I don't really know. what, yeah, well, uh. But then she sent up her prayers and stuff. And, you know, she she was basically by herself, you know. And the next time she was like, okay, I've been through this before. I've seen the results of this, of this being faithful. So I'm not going to let this situation steal my joy. Right? So then now, the most high cut the time, like, down somewhat. You know, so she's good. And then the next time she, about it, you know, she went through it again. She was like... Yeah, you know, most high, I know that, you know, this and that. I know you doing something, you know, because she was confident that because she serves the most high through Christ, she knows the most high and Christ are going to reward her if she stays faithful. And that faith gives her confidence. All right. So I want to go back to the... um What's the name? The uh, document I made up um, with the joy. And I just want to read that some more. The uh, emotion evoked, meaning you bring it about. And too many people look for joy or comfort in excessive alcohol, drugs, the, the feeling I get from vaping, banana, strawberry, weed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, uh, or, or the, the feeling I get, the comfort. It takes away the stress of some, of some loud or pills or, you know, huff and, gl- <laughs> huff and glue. You know, I went to, uh, I, my keyboard had some, um, I was eating some uh, peanut butter and crackers the other day. A keyboard on my computer had some uh, little crumbs in it. I go to the store, get some canned air. I got to show ID for it because people be huffing it, getting high. And I'm like, yo, what? So this people is looking all around in their environment for joy or comfort or delight. And all it had, the only way it can really have a lasting effect is if you take and get it through Christ by obeying him at his mouth, at his word, right? And then it is in you and it comes out. You don't go get, I mean, we can go to a comedy show. Yeah, I'm a laugh. (laughs) I'm not going to be droopy. Yeah. I'm happy. No, I'm going to have fun and stuff like that. But the joy should be in you already. And too many people deal with this sadness or depression or whatever it's caused by. They don't look at that, but they go to external means. And that's not what the scriptures are talking about. That is you fighting a battle against an evil mindset, an evil spirit that works very deceitfully and very slowly, and you're losing when you do stuff like that, all right? The emotion evoked by well-being, success, or good fortune, or by the prospect of possessing, possessing rather, what one desires. You know, when I hit the lottery, I'm going to be so happy. No, no, dude, you hit the lottery for 10000 but you spent 10000 in the last year playing lottery. What? And you happy? You should have just saved them. No, that's too much like right. But the thing is, I wanted to concentrate on this. The emotion evoked by well-being. Well-being is the state of being happy, healthy, or prosperous. So the thing is, joy can come from us just being happy. And um, 
you said the thing about doing something for 30 days um, turns into a habit. It turns into a part of you doing it consistently, right? Did you know that I think it's 60 seconds or 90 seconds? If you smile like for 90 seconds or whatever the time is, you know, that they they had, they had this little scientific fact that I was uh, looking through, scrolling through. And I actually tried it. And it, when you smile for a certain period of time, it can actually like cool you off or pick you up. But that's something that you do to bring that about. That's you evoking that. And I'm not talking, when I say evoke, I don't mean some type of invocation and, you know, you mixing boiled frog's legs and newt, I a newt and all this other stuff or you doing some type of spell. I'm talking about you having this joy because Christ said you have to have it to be right with him, regardless of your um, environmental situations. All right. So did you have something on that, bro? No, no, I did not. Okay. All right. Well, let's look at peace. Um, Peace, a state of tranquility or quiet. Mm. (laughs) Such, (laughs) Such as freedom from civil disturbance. So you can live in like a peaceful neighborhood or you can live in a rowdy neighborhood but in your house is peaceful. And how does that happen? It happens when you align yourself with the most high through Christ. So you're not going to do things that contribute to confusion because confusion is one of the opposites of peace. Psalms 119 verse 160 says, Great peace have all they that love thy law or that do do thy commandments. All right? So when you order yourself aright, according to as it is written, you will have that peace. Okay? Like civil disturbance, argument, fight. You know? Okay, somebody steps on your shoes at the supermarket. Are you going to say, oh, yeah, well, man, it's all kind of ways to clean my shoes and stuff on YouTube. I'll just go look that up. Or are you going to have, as Dave Chappelle so eloquently described, as an inward moment? Yo, what you doing stepping on my shoes? Yo, get back here, man. Blah, blah, blah. You know, then you look at boondocks when they did the... uh at the beginning of the um, stink meter thing where they had the two dudes walking down the street, bumped into each other, and they had an inward moment. You have to learn how to avoid those things. And this is also something that comes from in you. When you can avoid these situations or let these situations pass, these situations that cause disturbance or when you grow in the fruits of the spirit to um, de-escalate them or pass by them or not get yourself involved in them, that brings you peace. And that is only going to come to you from you serving the most high through Christ. All right a state of security or order within a community provided for by law or custom. You mean like the state of security or order in the community of the people of Israel, like um, they were working at during, let's say, Nehemiah and Ezra's time? Or the state of of security and order within a community of Hebrews at the end of the book of Esther? Yeah, because they followed the Most High's commandments and sought him and he delivered them. 
And that goes back to when you follow the Lord, it goes back to they will deliver you and have you free from civil disturbance. (laughs) All right. But listen to this. This is a good one. Definition two. Freedom from disquieting or oppressive thoughts or emotions. These are things that come from within. They come from within you. So we have to use these fruits of the Spirit because all of these things come from within and they control and dictate our choices. So let's say, let's go back to the example. Um, My friend that had lost their job, right? Did they go into sadness or did they start oppressing themselves with their disorderly or oppressive thoughts or even go into sadness or anger? No, no. And that's that piece. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead, bro. I got to, I'm just going to yeah. read it. We don't have to post yeah. it up here, but I'm going to read a, yeah. mm-hmm. I'm going to read a verse from Proverbs chapter four. Mm-hmm. And this is a testament to how the scriptures mm-hmm. in the most high is talking about the importance of well-being for, mm-hmm. for the individual that wants to stay be in a state of being of righteousness or being, you know, constantly being in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So Proverbs chapter four, and we're going to read from verse 20 to 22 or 23. Mm -hmm. It says, my son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my saints. Mm-hmm. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Mm-hmm. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto mm. those that find them and health to all their flesh. Mm. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And the reason why I read this is because this is the most high reminding us of why it's so important to be in a state of well-being. Because just in Mm -hmm. the verse before this, this is combating that wickedness, the darkness, the malevolence. And in Mm -hmm. verse 19, it says, the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Mm. And most most people that live ignorantly or live in darkness or live negatively are constantly being stumbled out of their own ignorance. Mm. I think a lot of times people that are wicked don't really want to be wicked, but they don't know that the light exists within them. They don't know how to fight. But how do we remind them? By being in the spirit of Christ so that when they are around you, they're like, oh, Mm -hmm. that looks different. Mm -hmm. And if they really truly desire any righteousness or to change their ways, Mm -hmm. they're going to want to be more like you. They're going to want to know why you're like this. And then you can guide Mm -hmm. them in the right direction. That's all, bro. Mm -hmm. All praises to the most high through Christ. Just like Paul said, be a follower of me as I am a follower of Christ. Right. Um, That freedom from disquieting or oppressive thoughts or emotions I want to pull this up right quick. Um, Right quick. And it's a scripture from Ecclesiasticus chapter 30 and verse 21. Um, Read that right quick for me. Ecclesiastes chapter 30 verse 21 says, glue not over... Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> glue not. Yeah. Well, you are you are going to glue yourself to heaviness. If it's the same thing. I should have just let I'm you go. Over bro. Here, same re- thing. Re- <laughs> yo, yo, hold on. Give hold not. on, bro. Hold on, hold on, hold okay. on, bro. Okay. All right. There we go, bro. <laughs> 
All right. It says, give not over thy mind to heaviness and afflict not thyself in thine own counsel. Mm. The gladness of the heart is the life of man and the joyfulness of a man prolongeth his days. It does what? It does what? It prolongs his days. And let me tell you Mm. something. That is facts, Mm. right? Because it's been proven that if you're in a constant positive state, just smiling a lot, Mm -hmm. it takes years off you aging and it prolongs your life. Mm -hmm. It prolongs your life to be righteous Mm -hmm. and to stay Mm -hmm. in that being. Mm -hmm. But now what is this up in the previous verse? Afflict not yourself in your own counsel. So you are figuring out, well, because this happened, this definitely means this. Because this happened, it definitely means that. And it's all negative. Like I remember I was taking somebody to go dr- to go driving, right? But so what I'm doing is I was I had them in a parking lot uh, a few months prior, and a cop came up to me and said, Hey, listen, take them to a cemetery. There's no curbs for you to run into. There's, I mean, most of the monuments and stones, they're, you know, 10, 15 feet back from the roadway. So you got time to stop. You know, the speed limit is low because if somebody's just learning how to drive, you know, you want to start them out kind of slower. So it's not going to be people, you know, passing them off. So I went to go. This is a couple months later. I went to go take them. Where are we going? We're not going where I'm used to. This is going to be so terrible. I'm like, how do you know? We, you don't even know where we're going. You don't know, you know, why are you so negative? Oh, no, this is going to be terrible. I don't want to go. So, okay, all right, well, made a U-turn and took them back. But the thing is, it was recommended to me by someone because the, the policeman at the time when he was telling me, take them to the cemetery, he said he to train two or three of his kids there. This is somebody with experience. But no, that wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. So what happened? That person afflicted themselves with their own thoughts that they gave credence to. They thought that whatever negative thing they thought was so wise and so correct. So it justified them in being sad, frantic, and scared. And you can't drive like that. All right? That's an example. All right? And that will disquiet you. That is actually no joy, but it that no joy of that situation, afflicting yourself in your own counsel, will take your peace from you because now you stress it. And then there it is. That's one of the keys to having a longer life, having a gladness of heart. And you explained that absolutely perfectly. So read uh, verses 23 and 24 of Ecclesiasticus chapter 30. The gladness of the heart is the life of man, and the joyfulness of a man prolongs his days. Love thine own soul and comfort thy heart. Remove sorrow from far from thee, for sorrow hath killed many, and there is no profit therein. Mm, So that's so true. You know, yeah. I always talk about that in um Mm -hmm. in in Isaiah about the word woe. Yes. Where it says, Woe unto them that have accepted the darkness for the light and the Mm -hmm. light for the darkness and bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter and all that. Mm -hmm. But that word woe is important because that word woe is very self-destructive. It's like, it's the pity party. It's like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to feel sorry for myself mm-hmm. and I'm going to feel sorry for myself to the point where I become a sorry individual. So there's no Whoa. profit in that. There's no profit. It only, it only brings you more woe. It only brings mm. you more despair. 
but it takes away your peace. It makes you miserable. Right. It takes away your joy. It makes you sad and it will kill you. Slowly. Yes. Slowly. Dead Satan. man walking. <laughs> yep. Dead Satan. Man walking. Satan got you and his, his spirits of sadness and sorrow are running rampant in your mind and you have, you don't know or you've given up or, you know, fighting it. But that all goes back to Hebrews 3 where, you know, you can exhort each other. We can exhort each other, right? And that's why we put our uh, church information up and broadcast on these platforms. We can exhort you according to the scriptures so that you aren't hardened through the deceitfulness of sin because a lot of these sinful spirits are very, very deceptive. All right. So we have to exhort each other to break off these, these, because that sin will get in you and build up a hard wall around it because that's your comfort zone and you're not going to leave it. You can't, you won't allow yourself to leave it. No, no. We have to get rid of that sin and those wicked mindsets, those evil mindsets. So read uh, verse 24, because we read a scripture that uh, talked about the envy and stuff uh, earlier. Read verse 24. Verse 24. Envy and wrath shorten the life and carefulness bringeth age before the time. Mm, so envy and wrath will shorten your life. I know somebody very close to me. They used to get so mad. They was they were an expert railer. All right. And um, you know, when I was a kid back in the last century, they used to say that <laughs> that when you get really mad, your blood was boiling. Right. And this person died from Leukemia, which is cancer of the blood, you know. So carefulness bringeth age before the time. So if you're always worried, so if you don't have that faith in the most high in Christ, which brings that confidence and you're worried and uh, frantic, you're going to shrivel yourself up with all that stress that you've given yourself. And it's the fact that you are giving it to yourself. That's the thing. Because when we go back here and look, uh, can you pull that up again for me, bro? When you go back here and look at one of those definitions of peace, it talks about freedom from disquieting, or oppressive thoughts or emotions, the anger, the sadness, the apathy, right? These things will have you oppressing yourself and you will mentally work yourself into a zone that at, over time you will not want to come out of. And that is very destructive. And whether it's sadness or anger or whatever emotion or whatever thought it is that you are afflicting yourself with, it's going to take away your peace and it's going to eventually take you out. Right? Now, here's one that's definitely scriptural. Peace B3. Harmony in personal relations. Wow. Harmony in personal relations. The sisters were at peace with each other. Um, you know, sometimes parents have to use certain methods to have kids at peace. Like um, I know of the, what is it called? It's called the 2XL t-shirt that you put, you put two kids in, you know, to force them to be at peace. But that's, you know, foolishness is bar bound in the heart of children. But what we have to do is have that harmony in our personal relations with each other. No envying, no hatred, no miserability, 
no um, works of the flesh, actually, you know, which is higher up, excuse me, uh, before the fruits of the spirit. I was going to say higher up in the chapter because it's that way on the page in my Bible. But it's before, I think it starts at Galatians 5 and um, 19. Where if you have any of these works of the flesh, you cannot have harmony in your personal relations. Right? So these are things that bring peace. And when we can deal with these things according to Christ and the example he set, we will have another fruit of the spirit. And guess what? We can fight off those uh, temptations, those evil thoughts that come and go and come back again. Like it says, when Satan tempted Christ in Luke 4, Satan, uh, Christ uh, did well on the temptation. He resisted the devil and he will flee and he fled from him, but he wait, he searched for a more convenient time. So it's being consistent with these fruits of the spirit and fighting off these spiritual attacks. That's how we're successful in the spiritual warfare. So you have anything? Yeah, I was thinking mm -hmm. um, contentment. Mm, gratitude. Contentment mm -hmm. and gratitude and just being content. You know, I think mm -hmm. that when we read about the, the life of the of Christ, I think that mm -hmm. Christ was very content with mm -hmm. where he was. He was very present. And mm -hmm. um, righteousness always prevails. Righteousness always prevails. And I'm going to bring out another scripture to, yeah. to prove that can, to be true. Yeah, pull it up, bro. We're going to bring out Proverbs chapter 14, mm -hmm. verse 20. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's go to that real quick. Mm -hmm. All right. So it says, mm. a sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. Ouch. He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his maker, but he that honoreth him have mercy on the poor. Mm -hmm. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteousness have hope in his death. Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that have understanding, but that which is in the midst of fools is made known. Righteousness mm. exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So the reason I, I read this is because this is a good uh, explanation as to being of well-being, being in the contentment and that Holy Spirit of Christ Mm -hmm. It's going to get you good things. But mm -hmm. being in a spirit of lack, especially when it mm -hmm. comes to lack of understanding of the word, mm -hmm. lack of understanding of the righteousness and that spirit of the Most High in Christ, mm -hmm. it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt you. But it's a universal principle. It's a universal principle mm -hmm. that if you do good, Good things happen. If you do bad, bad things happen. That's why the law of attraction is real. Like whatever you sow, you know, whatever seed you sow, you're going to receive that. You're going to get that. Whatever mm -hmm. goes around comes around. But I like mm -hmm. this scripture because it's 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 pointing out contentment. It's being content mm -hmm. with being a good person. And what that brings opposed to when you're not a good person when you're living in darkness and when you're looking to antagonize and to disrupt and destroy, you only wind up really destroying yourself. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's all. Mm -hmm. One thing about the law of attraction though, um, a lot of people confuse that with the judgment and the blessings of the Lord. When you do these things through the Lord, they're going to come back to you. So a lot of people will say karma or law of attraction, but we have to remember that in the law of attraction, you are um, trying to manifest things. And remember, Satan tempted Christ 
with manifesting rocks into food, into bread. And um, Christ didn't want to do that. He wanted to uh, live by the word of God instead. So, and a lot of times, you know, when you, you know, when we mention, you know, law of attraction and karma and stuff like that, people think that we're talking about the, 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 the witchcraft and stuff. And yeah, it is real, but it's a portal to have these uh, works of the flesh be used to drive yourself to get it through unrighteous means. And we have to remember to go through righteousness and all things. So I know what you meant. Well, I yeah, know, the, I know, I know what you meant, but somebody that, that, it, uh, you know, that doesn't understand how to actually fight, they may not. Well, that's mm-hmm. the thing is that mm-hmm. we either manifesting in a spirit of righteousness or we're mm-hmm. manifesting in a spirit of malevolence. Mm-hmm. There's no yeah, in between. It's either and one the or the other. Yeah, the malevolence is using yourself, which is using Satan and spirits and manifesting it through Christ because we man, we have to manifest the fruits of the spirit, right? We right. have to have them in, in us and obviously live by that. But that is under the auspices of the most high through Christ. But, you know, a lot of times people, they confuse that because I've seen devout so-called Christians, right? With vision boards. <laughs> I'm like, um, you do know, oh yeah, you know, Jesus, da, 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 da. listening to gospel music the whole nine yards and got it. Dude, do you know what? You know, I'm no, I'm not talking about just vision boards. I'm talking about vision boards with a picture of a jet, and then here's a Bentley, and then hit no, 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 no. I'm taking it way too far because you know. The sisters in the group was wearing control top pantyhose and 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 low cut uh, tops and all of this other stuff talking about Jesus and, and manifestation. So I try to avoid those terms because a lot of people think that we're talking about what I just described and we're actually not, you know, so. Just just to put that disclaimer out there, it's not, you know, you didn't say anything wrong, but, you know, some people can take uh, what we say the wrong way. So um, let's pull that list back up again, bro, and go, I think it's uh, long-suffering. Um, long-suffering, patiently enduring lasting offense or hardship. And bro, you were talking about this earlier with that situation you were going through. You know, you could have went, oh, you know what? You, you over there, like at the player haters ball, you, you, I hate you. And, and I don't even know you and you, you, I hope all the bad things in the world happen to you and only you (laughs) just because you went through something, you know, no, no. And actually when you look at long suffering, it is the next step of patience because I'm glad you brought that up because I (laughs) must be reading my mind because something (laughs) that um, I discuss with take one a lot is about the stepping Mm -hmm. stones. Him and I have Mm -hmm. these discussions frequently Mm -hmm. and we've talked about how him and I was dealing with those other people. And that was a stepping stone to get us to where we Mm -hmm. are now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we don't see things as a stepping stone. Mm. We don't look at situations that don't go well for us as that was just a stepping stone. It wasn't meant to stay Mm -hmm. there because Mm -hmm. the most high is guiding you across the river. Mm. And each stone is getting closer, getting you closer to where you need to be opposed Mm -hmm. to where you think you should be. Mm -hmm. And that's why with this situation, just like with Job, I know that I'm still blessed. I know that the Most High is still with me and I still love the Most High even when I go through situations that are not necessarily favorable at that moment for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all I want to say. Exactly. All praises, bro. And then um, I'm going to do gentleness and goodness together. So gentleness is the quality or state of being gentle, um, which is 
especially mildness of manners or disposition. So what was that thing? They used it in a remix. Um, one of the, what was that guy back in the day? It's West Coast. But he had this old lady on there. Dead boys, one mean such and such or, you know, so meaning um, this dude was known as somebody that was mean. Very, very angry and strict, but with anger. Like he had all these higher expectations for everybody else than he did himself. And he um, would basically go petty or go off on you if you didn't live up to his expectations, you know, but we're not supposed to be like that. We're supposed to have mildness of manners or disposition. And then goodness is the quality or state of being good, being good, not uh, what did it say in um, Corinthians, not because you're being forced to, but because you're doing it from your heart. It is in you and you will be good to people because that's just how you are. That is a fruit of the spirit, you know? And a lot of times, um, what does this say in Proverbs? How when you, when your enemy does you wrong, you be, um, you be good to them. And what it does is it heaps coals of fire on their head. I think it is, um, uh, let me see. Um, I think it's Proverbs 25. Here it is. Proverbs 25. I'm going to read it right quick. 21 and 22. Proverbs 25, 21 and 22. If thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. So that's going into like how Christ, when he was reviled, reviled not again. And when he was threatened, he didn't retaliate. He was good. You know, because of the people that were threatening and reviling him, some of them people repented because they actually saw him. If you read the scriptures chronologically, you know, the gospels, and especially when they were trying to um, find ways to kill him and falsely accuse him and put him to death for violating the Sabbath when he wasn't. By the time you get to Acts 2, some of those people that actually consented and to put him to death repented. All right. So that's why we have to set that example of being gentle and good because we don't know who's going to see that example and be shamed by it. And it'll cause them to think, you know what? I did that dude so mean. I did that sister so mean, but she was still kind. She was still gentle. She treated me good. She rewarded me good for my evil. And it was in her. It was natural to her. She didn't do it like, felt like she was forced to do it. She did it because it was natural. That can actually be the example that calls somebody to Christ. All right. Um, did you have anything on that, bro? No, I'm good. Okay. Faith, the next fruit of the spirit. Allegiance to duty or a person. Loyalty. Uh, I, I shouldn't have put this one up here. Lost faith in the company's president because too many people might get triggered. Yeah, I lost faith with the president. You know, relax, it'll be okay. He might be president, but Christ is king. And the last guy that was president, he probably was president, but Christ is king. So 
So allegiance to duty or a person, fidelity, integrity, stand patness, stand fastness rather, steadfastness to one's promises, sincerity of intentions. It is in you. You are serious about it. Acted in good faith. Belief and trust in and loyalty to God. Belief in the traditional doctrines of a religion, which it should actually say belief in the doctrine of the Holy Scriptures. Firm belief in something for which there is no proof, which is basically Hebrews chapter 11 at the start. Right? You can't obey God if you, if you don't believe that he is. Okay? And then complete trust. Just like Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Okay? These are things that help us understand what faith is. Faith is one of the fruits of the Spirit. And faith is how we fight off the wickedness of the devil and his minions who are going to constantly be attacking us through our thoughts, our temptations, which will try to disquiet us or oppress us with these thoughts or emotions, or through things in our environment, like things in our house, um, uh, a somebody, a sister's husband may get a bad spirit on them, a bad mindset on them and start railing, right? Oh, uh, listen, you know what? By my faith, says the sister, I'm going to have to show my husband love and correct him out of the scriptures to show him that that railing is wrong. First Corinthians 5 and First Corinthians 6, railers and revilers are not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. But through that complete trust in using the word of the Lord to have that order and that peace in her house, she dealt faithfully and brought her husband back from going into sin. That's just a one example of dealing in faith. All right. You have anything on that, bro? No, I'm good, bro. Okay, because I know we're running uh, short on time, but I just want to try to I'm a uh, try to put the um, the last two together: meekness and temperance. So meekness is the quality or state of being meek, a mild, moderate, humble, or submissive quality, and then synonyms are down to earthness. Humbleness, humility, lowliness, modesty. So meek means that you can submit yourself to Christ and forget about doing what you want to do. You know that you have to do, uh, you have to react, you have to think, or you have to do things in certain situations that show that you are submitting yourself to Christ as it is written. That's that humility and submissive quality that is the meekness. And temperance, like you mentioned so eloquently before, is the moderation in action, thought, or feeling. Restraint. Restraint. Habitual. Remember you talked about Doing something for 30 days, it becomes a habit. It becomes in you, right? Habitual moderation in the indulgence of the appetites or passions, right? So we can temper, hold down, suppress our wicked appetites and passions and kill them with this fruit of the Spirit. And our desires, passions, lusts, likes, loves that are against the scriptures, Satan knows these things. And this is how he comes with the temptation. You used to like big booty Judy in the world. 
and you not having a good day, guess what's going to walk right in front of you and almost bump into you? Big Booty she's, Judy? She's not doing it. <laughs> Satan brought that about to tempt you to see what you're going to do. Does he? Did he get you? Or are you going to use your temperance? Are you going to mortify those carnal, lustful thoughts and appetites? Right? So, um, you have anything on that, bro? No, I just want to say mm-hmm. that uh, mm-hmm. these two fruits of the Spirit are very powerful mm-hmm. in negating anything that Satan throws at you because mm-hmm. the, the meekness, that being humble, mm-hmm. it's very powerful because as long as you stay within meekness and humility, you will never allow pride to mm-hmm. get the best of you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is how you combat pride is through humility, being humble. The temperance, you combat it because you don't allow yourself to overindulge in anything that's not good for you. But also when it comes to meekness and temperance together, you don't easily get distracted by negativity to be impulsive in that spirit of anger. Why? Because you're humble. You are submissive in understanding situations that are working in the way that they're supposed to work instead of you thinking that they have to work in a certain way, which usually comes from your own understanding. And that's how you get caught up in the temptation because you think you have the solution, but the solution that you have is coming from an understanding of anger, vengeance, to spite someone. Because somebody did you dirty. But when you're humble, that it doesn't, that that mindset, it protects you from going into the mindset of wrath and of envy mm-hmm. and of jealousy mm-hmm. and all these other, all these other spirits of competition. Mm-hmm. Humility, it it basically nullifies all that and it lets you mm-hmm. stay in a in a in a state of being that's peaceful. Mm-hmm. Because you're not getting wound up, impulsive over something that you have no control over. Mm-hmm. And that's the big thing. So I wanted to mention that because these two mm-hmm. fruits of the spirit, very powerful. Mm-hmm. And if there's any that we can practice every day, it's definitely meekness. That's something mm-hmm. we can start practicing now for 30 days so that it becomes part of us. I'm still mm-hmm. working on it, but I've, I could tell you just what an experience I had today. My, mm-hmm. my fruit of the spirit of when it comes to meekness is, is getting stronger and stronger. Mm-hmm. All praise. And I stay more quiet now than I've ever had before with certain mm-hmm. situations. I just stay quiet and I keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now I did have this um, scripture down. I'm just going to read it right quick. Uh, because I wanted to squeeze one last scripture okay. um, in here. Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, and these true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report is according to the scriptures, not according to your mind. All right. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So meditate on these things for the purpose, right, of growing in them. And this is what it's talking about right quick. I, I want to try to squeeze this in because I know we're running very low on time. Um, and I just want to say that we just gave like a quick overview because. We don't want to have like a six hour class on these things. This is just like a basic overview yeah. on, on things to like, it's like a primer or a get started. Yeah. It's the uh, first installment thing. to the yeah. uh, spiritual warfare series. Yeah. And we're going to go into more detail as time goes on. So uh, can you pull that up right quick? Philippians? Um, no, it's uh, Thessalonians. Um, I got it up in the queue already. Oh, right. 
It's uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, and I'll read it right quick. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. So what we have to do is, you know, we have to go over these things Um, and study to show ourselves approved. But also, like you said, we have to practice. We have to grow. And we have to get it right. We have to get these things so down pat and and of such a habitual nature, rather, that it's our first response to any situation is the fruits of the Spirit. You know, so we can better decide or or, so we can better control ourselves and please the most high through Christ. So that was basically all I had, bro. I just want to give all praises to the most high through Christ, bro. All right. Giving all praises. Any final comments? No, just all praises to the most high through Christ. I hope this class was um, edifying and thank the most high in Christ for no, uh, Uh, technical difficulty demons and stuff like that. And we got out a good, a good show, I think. So all praises to the most high through Christ. And thanks for the brother Samak for putting the scriptures in. Right. Right. And thanks for everybody that, um, that joined this live broadcast. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate Mm -hmm. your uh, participation and support. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's, this class was very edifying for me. So giving all praises to the Most High, giving all praises to Christ, and giving all praises to life and, and what it has to offer. Because we're only here for a moment. So we might as well get it right while we're here, right? Mm-hmm. Instead of getting it wrong and possibly have to do it all over again. So No, possibly have to suffer eternal damnation. That too. <laughs> So with that being said, brothers and sisters, um, Mm -hmm. be well, stay safe and, you know, uh, practice your, your fruits of the spirit one at a time, Mm -hmm. be, you know, be cognizant of all of them when you need to be, but pick one out and and make it a point to practice it for the next 30 days and see what happens. And then Mm -hmm. maybe you can share for the next episode what that fruit of the spirit has been doing for you that you've been now consciously practicing. So Mm -hmm. giving all praise to the most high in Christ, uh, Mm -hmm. brothers and sisters, they want to learn more about the BOCC. You can go to the BOCC.com. You can also download shows from the BOCC on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Mm -hmm. You can also download um, classes and episodes from the Council on Christ Relations podcast, wherever podcasts are played. So with that being said, let's play a song from, uh, let's see, let's play a song from Brother Demon Slayer. Mm. And uh, I think the song we can play here, let me see if I can find something. I like the hunt. So let's, let's, let's play the hunt. And we're going to exit out with the hunt. <laughs> And um, any any last words besides what you said before we? Uh... Uh, no, nah, just giving, once again, giving all praises to the Most High through Christ for allowing us to come out here and exhort our people to repentance in Christ. So all praises. All praises. Mm-hmm. So stick around for a sec. Let's play this music and then we'll end the broadcast. <laughs> that she might fly into the wilderness into her place. 
Abba help me through my suffering Demons on attack but I can't fold I gotta gird up again Pain up in my heart and I just really need your perfectness I'm gripping on your sword a couple of ways but that's my medicine I can feel it in the air that we so close I can feel it in the air we need your hope I can feel it in the air that this the hunt I can feel it, I know you feel it I can feel it creeping, lurking, searching for me, trying to break my soul. No, I won't let you hurt me no more. I've been seeking the Father up in my soul for real. I've been seeking the Father. He put my flesh in the dirt and put my soul in the field. Touched by divine and husband, protect me from my own will. Just a servant, I'm looking to help my brothers overcome their demons and keep pushing to the mark. I know he will. I've been fighting for my life and the only man I trust is Christ. Cause he saved my life so many times I know I should. To die. I give Bible praise cause his mercies always be magnified All the lust and evil in this world you know it's fit to die And I know you know it's do or die We gotta repent cause there's not much time now Guard your soul because it's going down Guard your soul because it could be now Abba help me through my suffering Demons on attack but I can't fold I gotta gird up again Pain up in my heart and I just really need your perfectness I'm gripping on your sword a couple of ways But that's my medicine I can feel it in the air that we so close I can feel it in the air we need your hope I can feel it in the air that this the hunt I can feel it, I know you feel it it don't matter, no looking back, yeah, we on the path Chasing the kingdom, narrow path is the only path Messiah said repent, so I follow that I wanna be safe when the king come, I put my head down Most I help me through it all, I pray my prayers Pierce through the clouds and land at your feet Cause you are glorious I'm going through attacks, depression deep down It hurt me inside, keep my enemies at bay I pray you bring all of the thunder and the lightning And the fire upon these demons that tempt me My enemies trying to make me fall out I, I know we be a hunter, so the shield of faith, my defense. Shield of faith, it quenches all the darts like Aquafina. I swim in living water, my environment to deepen. Hallelujah, I but wanna be close to you like Peter. Thank you for your mercy, I'll keep praying for our people. I know I'm not deserving, but I gotta warn them of their evil. Abba help me through my suffering Demons on attack but I can't fold I gotta gird up again Pain up in my heart and I just really need your perfectness I'm gripping on your sword a couple of ways But that's my medicine I can feel it in the air that we so close I can feel it in the air we need your hope I can feel it in the air that this the hunt I can feel it, I know you feel it And the serpent cast out of his mouth Water is a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm.